Hello, everyone. My name hey, is Alvaro. Hey, hey, I'm with Sia here today. The live streaming gods are not on our side, <laughs> but we are trying to do, to do the best. Um, I am live streaming from Uruguay, completely changed due to change of schedule. So I'm on the other side of the Atlantic, and Sia, she's streaming from Israel. Welcome, Sia. Hey, thank you for having me here. Um, so today we have a great session, many stuff. Uh, we are going to learn about real-time analytics, uh, about KQL, about the different items, and then Alvaro will take us through a very nice demo. And of course, we always have time for uh, questions. And also, please feel free to ask questions during this session. Uh, are we ready? Are you ready? Can we start? Let's start. Let's go. Okay. So first of all, there is a live. There is a live uh, MS Learn that all the stuff that I'm going to um, walk you through. It's also available online. So just click on this QR code and you will be able to do it yourself. It's super important. Very useful. During the entire session, Uri Barash, our GPM, is here with us to answer your question, any type of question regarding the product, vision, capabilities. Feel free uh, to post it, and he is here to answer your questions and also to collect your feedback and anything else regarding real-time analytics in Fabric. And as I mentioned earlier, it's super important and very useful to Try it yourself. Here, we will take you through, we will explain, we give you examples. Everything is very theoretical, but the best way to learn is by try it yourself. There is many ways and options to try it, and I will go uh, and we will talk about some of them next week. Say hi now. Let's see. I'm hi. I'm Tvia. I'm from Israel. Um, Alvaro, you are from. Hi, I'm oh. Alvaro. I'm from Uruguay. Oh, I right, live right? usually in Switzerland, but this time of the year, it brought me back to my home country in South America. So we are doing a whole across the ocean uh, stream today. Yeah, and, I, and I'm pretty sure that there are many people here from all over the globe. So say hi, say the place that you want, and maybe even if you have a special question or request, post it right now. Let's start. First of all, we'll describe what is real-time analytics. Um, how, what are the scenarios to support real-time analytics? Then we dive into the um, the elements and KQL and capabilities, features. We will have a small uh, knowledge test, so stay tuned. And of course, at the end, at in the middle, we will have a, a, a very interesting demo that, uh, um, and we will have also time for Q and A. So let's start. About two and a half years ago, all the data leaders, all Microsoft data leaders sit together and try to understand how can we make a real change in the world of data? You know, there are so many different solutions. Everything does something. So we have started to collect feedback. People uh, told us that they, are, they want to be more independent today. Whenever they have any question, um, unless they are data scientists or data engineer or master with their data, they need to ask questions for from a different group. They can't ask questions and get results. And every and there are so many different um, solutions and data solutions in the organization, and each one of them has only different slices of the data. So they don't have one truth of the of the whole picture. And they also have so many governance and optimization and security. And whenever you do in one system, it's not uh, impact the other system. All those challenges are sitting today in every, at least before Fabric, it was the, the standard in each and every organization. And then we asked them, okay, so what do you want to have? And they mentioned that they want, their request was very simple. We would like our personal experiences in our professional experiences. We would like the system, all the solution, all the data uh, uh, portfolio to be very interactive. 
the ability to ask questions whenever I want to get results very fast in a couple of seconds, and that everyone, every person in the business, any person in the organization will be able to ask to access the data smartly and get results without be, being data professional, just to be a citizen data scientist and to get smart decisions based on the data in the organization. And for that, first of all, we build Fabric, and in specific, the Fabric Synapse Real-Time Analytics. So what, what is it? Let's start with a short video. Yeah, just to comment on, on what Sia was saying, since um, we are not getting audio, is that um, when you have a big organization and you are doing real time, you need to keep in mind that there is a lot of, of, of tools out there and you want them to, to integrate, to integrate with your solution. And something that uh, we've been trying to do with real time um, analytics in Fabric. No audio? Is to be able to to integrate what you have already, whether it's on Azure, whether it's an open source tooling, and bring everything together with uh, with the real time uh, tooling that we we are going to to see today. There is no audio. Yeah, there is no audio from the video, so I was there is no audio. Explain a bit. Okay, so I... okay, so I will move on. Uh, okay, never mind. Let's skip the video. If there are issues with the voice, I'll just skip it. Um, good. So what we have decided to do is to take the um, fabric and to build a portfolio that includes all data solution in one area. Customers bring the data one time and everything is accessible to all the different workloads. In real-time analytics, we are focusing on the streaming capabilities of Fabric. Whenever you want to access data fast, whenever you have different data structure, different formats, semi-structure, um, structure data, and free text, this is the place to handle. Real-time analytics can handle from few megabytes of data up to gigabytes, terabytes, and even petabytes. Everything is auto-scaled to optimize performance and optimize uh, cost. And the idea is to empower the citizen data scientists. Data is available and people can ask questions in very in variety of ways, whether it's with the KQL, whether it's with SQL, whether it's with natural language or just graphical options. Everything is indexed, everything is partitioned. And why it's important, once everything is indexed and partitioned, every query that you can ask will run fast and with very good performance and accessible for any type of query. You don't need to predict the question. In the past, whenever you want to ask question, you needed to define indexing and in foreign key and primary, you know, to optimize the, the, the way that the database structure. With, with KQL database, everything and real-time analytics, everything is already indexed and partitioned, so you can ask easily any type of question and get the performance in high uh, velocity. You can support any um, any type of structure of data, whenever you have JSON or any type of semi-structured data, of course, structured data, and every, even free text is uh, indexed and you can ask questions and run queries on top of it. And one of our premises that every data is also, uh, we have one logical uh, copy. All the data that access to 
real-time analytics, also available in one lake. And you can also run queries from KQR query set, but also from notebook. With one click, you can create Power BI report. You can ingest data and copy data and transform data with pipeline and data flow. Every workload and every item in Fabric is fully integrated with the capabilities of real-time analytics. Yeah, so yeah. And, and the and next if, very if common you... question is when, what is, what are the most common scenarios? Yeah. Yeah, if you let me just comment because I, I want- uh, I'm with you. I, I want people to 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 understand the impact of what Svia just explained. Before I used to work at a company, we have a lot of scale, but one day the database was down and, and everybody in the developer room was like, what is going on? Ah, we forgot to add an index to the column, blah, 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 right? Um, then we need to start getting notification out of the data. Ah, okay, we have to integrate, let's say, RabbitMQ. And, and we, need, we need to connect data together, ah, but it's in another data center and we need to link to the data center, call the data center guys, they need to get connection, network plan. Imagine everything I should say, gone. Because with real-time analytics, with Fabric, everything, as, as, Fia, as Fia said, is in the one lake, data is shared, uh, KQL knows how to um, partition data, uh, it's being indexed, if it's text only. Like I remember even caring about um, the, the storage engine for MySQL. <laughs> Imagine devel developing like that. And, and this, is, this is the impact of, of, of what real-time analytics is bringing. Uh, up to you, uh, Sia. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification and the personal story. And this is something that is very unique. You know, have the ability just to bring data, the raw data. You don't need to make any uh, additional transformation with the data. Once you bring the raw data as it is, and you can, and everything is partitioned and indexed in different way, you can ask any type of question. And this is very powerful for organizations that want to evolve and want to have, you know, the freedom of everyone to ask any type of question. And the very most common question of our customer is, okay, it seems amazing, but to be honest, I don't need real time because it's real time analytics. So uh, real time analytics is not only for real time scenarios, it's for any type of scenarios that is event-based, time-based data. Uh, things like manufacturing that you would like to collect data of the manufacturing from IoT devices, from cars, automotive, any type of data that includes time-based, time-sensitive. And with that, of course, uh, let's talk about a human log, system log, uh, and any. And in our smart uh, world of IoT devices, security, cyber, and things like that. So. Even though that, yes, definitely, real-time analytics is addressing also real-time scenarios with streaming together with event stream, it's not only for that. In case you have a time-based data or in case you have free text or JSON-based data, or if you want to have scale up and run queries and get, resu uh, and get results fast, definitely you should consider the real-time analytics uh, uh, workload for that. So let's take an example. One of our customers actually wasn't he, he wasn't familiar with the, um, with the capabilities of real-time analytics. He had a very strong and very heavy Power BI report. Like most of the Fabric uh, uh, public preview users, they have started from Power BI and they wanted to make some uh, adjustment and improvement in their scenario. They actually suffered from long latency, uh, they couldn't ingest the entire set of data, so they uh, needed to add only sample of their data. So at some point, when they have started to try real-time uh, fabric in general, they wanted to see the capabilities of real-time analytics. They connected all their sources of data. They forked their sources of data to uh, send data also to uh, event stream and KQL databases. And on top of that, they build Power BI reports. The results was that actually are that, uh, first of all, all their reports was improved dramatically. 
their latency and the refresh time was reduced uh, by many percentages to less than up to 10 seconds, but most of them are much less than that. And more important than that is that, that is this sentence. In the past, you needed to be a data engineers. You did you needed to be data scientists in order to understand and to actually access the data. And today, since it's very user friendly and the language is nice and all the filters and the capability is very natural, it, everyone in the organization are empowered to ask their question and get results. And of course, there are also super powerful analytics capabilities to the advanced user as well. And the most common architecture is to collect data from different sources, whether it's structured data, whether it's streaming data, you can send it through through pipelines, data flow, event stream, uh, SDKs, many different ways to uh, ingest the data into KQL, da KQL database. In seconds, uh, in short time, the data is also available in one lake to data warehouse and, uh, and lake house. And of course, you can expose the data with notebook, with Power BI, with KQL query set, with our or SDKs with any um, reporting dashboard that you want. And you can go from raw data to a working Power BI in less than five seconds, uh, five minutes. And this is a really um, actually awesome stuff. And I'm pretty sure that you will see this soon in the demo. Once you get into real-time uh, analytics in Fabric, you will see at, uh, th three, type, three types of items, the KQL database, the KQL query set, and event stream. I will tell you a secret. Soon you will see additional two items, but I will share it with you in a, a later decision. So KQL database, it's the engine, is the database when you store all the data. Uh, it's the upper level in the database. Of course, you have tables, you have short, one leg shortcut, one leg shortcut is your way uh, to point to any other table in Fabric, whether it's from one, a lake house, data warehouse, another a Custo table, a KQL table. You, ca you, you can just point to it and, and get connection and everything is in one place and you will see it later. You also have the KQL query set. KQL query set is your kind of a workbench when you manage uh, and editing your uh, editing, running your queries and also can share it with your colleagues and with your uh, team members. And the uh, last but not least, event stream. Event stream is the streaming pipeline that stream data from different sources in different formats into a KQL database or one lake and you can easily also add transformation on top of it. Um, you have two uh, state. One is ingested as it is from source to, destina to destination, and the other states, state is also to add transformation on top of it and to make some adjustment in your data through the, the ingestion process. OK. Now let's uh, uh, meet some of the capabilities uh, of the SaaS solution. So for us, it was very, very important that everything will be fully managed by the service. Uh, the service has an algorithm behind the scenes that no in, out per three parameters, CPU, ingestion utilization, and of course, the storage itself. Everything, of course, is automatic partition and compressed. And also, and the reason that and the ra the rationale behind the auto scaling mechanism is, first of all, to optimize the performance, and the second one is to optimize your cost. The second one is you can provisioning it of a new KQL database. It's uh, it takes less than uh, than ten seconds, and end to end form provisioning a new KQL database, creating a new event stream, attach it to a store, and uh, connect it to a new table in KQL database, create on top of it 
Power BI report, make the adjustment and display it. All of that you can do with a very friendly user experience. And uh, uh, in a couple of seconds of effort. And you can see here that, and I get a dashboard, a database editor that display all the information of the database uh, easily. And I can easily connect, see the, each and every table, each and every element. And I can also run queries on top of it and et cetera, et cetera. And this is, again, this is a solution. We are targeting two We are targeting the citizen data scientists with pro developers. We enable all many high capabilities, high analytical capabilities with a, a vectors capabilities and graph and with time series analysis, but everything is accessible for the citizen data scientists also with a friendly query experience with KQ. Well, but also soon to come with a co-pilot in natural language. While it's loading, I just uh, I have to share with you that 10 seconds before uh, the session, uh, we just uh, uh, my computer is was totally crushed. So again, like any good uh, uh, session, live session, we have some surprises. So let's pray and hope that everything is uh, is okay. Okay, you're back. Thank you. Uh, uh, okay. Sample gallery. You would like to try real-time analytics, but to be honest, you don't have your own data set. So how can you start? Uh, here you can see that, that once you start with, uh, you can start with this page, you can start with the sample from the gate data or the, um, you, there are um, many different sample set and we are adding more and more every day. And once you, we create a new, uh, we ingest the data, we create a new database, new tables, KQL query set with very informative KQL, the learning experience. On top of it, we also produce a Power BI reports that will help you to understand how to do it for your own purposes and also real-time uh, dashboard that is coming soon. Um, KQL uh, real-time analytics is built on top of uh, the past technology of Azure Data Explorer uh, in Azure. Both of the technologies share the same common engine. And of course, the user experience is, uh, is different for each one of them. But for customers that already have Azure Data Explorer uh, clusters today, and they would like to explore the capabilities of, a, of Fabric and real-time analytics, they can easily start by creating a, a database a, a database shortcut that connect their own uh, Azure Data Explorer to Fabric uh, with a new uh, uh, a KQL database. And then they can have all the consumption experiences of queries, of notebook, of Power BI reports easily and smoothly inside Fabric. And soon to come is also to have the capability to have a, a, a one leg short a database shortcut between Fabric database to another Fabric database. I assume that you are wondering, okay, for the first scenario, it's very clear. You already have an ADX database and you would like to explore the new, gen the new uh, SAS generation. So it's very clear. For the second scenario, if you are wondering why, why you need and how can this feature can help you, I will give you the answer. Fabric to Fabric, uh, a database sh shortcut from Fabric to Fabric is very helpful when you would like to manage capacity. It's easier when you have two different workspace capacity and you would like to verify that, for example, the data scientist won't consume the entire production uh, uh, utilization or the or developer environment won't impact the testing environment. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. It's isolation of capacity and a kind of uh, a easy governance between different uh, side of the of the day of the uh, KQL database. Uh, 
and get data get data uh it's all start with you know every journey start with data and for us we try to do it very simple in the get data experience you can select any type of source whether it's event stream file one lake a azure storage once you select your source um there an inference <clears throat> run at the background and identify the most appropriate schema for this sample and suggest it to you and you will see it and once you click on it the table you can make adjustment with the schema with the with the uh, with the formats but once you click the table is auto generated the data is ingested automatically as a one-time ingestion or as a continuous ingestion with any update with any new copy of the data or any adjustment with the with the data will be ingested automatically and here you can see how a new table with ongoing ingestion continuous ingestion was created real time analytics is displayed in a low in a, a low latency from source to a uh, to query definitely real-time analytics is the scenario for you together with event stream build database you can the data is accessible for you uh, in a couple of seconds and also for the all the other workloads that can get access in a couple of uh, uh, a, that ingested data into the into KQL table. Oh, okay. And, and here you can see that all the data. Once you create a new date, a, a new KQL database, carbon copy, the data will be. Uh, um, also available in one lake in a Delta Parquet format starting from two weeks from now. Now it's Parquet, but in two weeks it will be in Delta Parquet and uh, uh, you can easily play with that and uh, enjoy. Are there any uh, questions that I need to address before I'm moving on? We have we have a couple of questions. One is, how do you support yep. data lineage? Okay, I can't hear you. So uh, you wrote me, great. Let me see. Uh, how do you support data lineage? Data lineage of all the KQL, all the real-time analytics is supported uh, through the lineage component in Fabric. Uh, if, if you have any specific questions, so please post it. And, and we are also uh, planning in the next, uh, I hope in the next semester, to add internal lineage that will help you to understand the internal relationship with, within real-time analytics between the uh, artifact and the sub-artifacts as well. Um, okay, I don't see any other question. With KQL and Power BI, we are understand most of our the initial fabric customers is coming from power bi just select them right click or and uh, generate power bi report and based on the query and the data set or the result data set we will auto generate a power bi a uh, report and the nice about it that you can also easily make the adjustment and you can also store it in any type any workspace and make the adjustment later 
uh, with the Power BI uh, editor. Basic report, but you can make any adjustment whenever it's convenient to you. ML models uh, on real-time analytics, we have a full integration with, uh, with Spark jobs and the notebook. KQL queries, KQL is supported there. You can just, you can go to the KQL database, open a notebook, all the connection will automatically generate it. And you can start and write your own query, your own questions and queries. Um, as any, as you heard in Ignite and also in Pass, uh, Copilot is uh, the next, actually is the current uh, uh, kingdom and the most promising features. And we also working on a couple of very uh, insightful uh, features that will allow you to ask questions in a human language. Behind the scenes, we will translate it into a query, run it and provide you the answers. Also with the query and the answers. The reason that we would expose the query we believe that uh, it's also a, a learning experience with the capability to ask your own query, to ask your own question, questions in query language. In addition to the natural language, you will be able to make the tweaks and the adjustment and to ask the exact questions and to have the control in your hand. <laughs> Coming soon. Coming soon, we are working on real-time dashboard a, a, um, that will support also the refresh time. Some of our customer wants to refresh their reports in a uh, in a frequency a frequency of couple of seconds. So let's say five, ten, fifteen seconds. Uh, they have also a huge a data set that they would like to explore. So real-time dashboard is a great operational uh, result. Norio data is the ability to ask questions with a, a user experience, with graphical cap and vi wizard capabilities without a, any words or KQL, just uh, slice and dice and get the results. We just added some uh, cool new capabilities. Um, we had uh, uh, some new stuff about the graph. Um, you can ask, you can uh, create your own graph in a KQL database. You can run queries on top of it in a graph, in a graph structure. Uh, think about how powerful and how dynamic is it to ask those capability to ask questions with graph. When you have a structured data that is graph, it's optimized the performance. It's also power and gives some uh, so much capabilities that today. Uh, not necessarily you have. Okay, uh, what else? Of course, as I, sh I told you, we shared the database shortcut. Database shortcut is the ability uh, to share ADX database, Azure Data Explorer data, a database with to Fabric, which allow you also the capability um, to explore any consumption experience in Fabric and still continue the management and the costing in, a, a, in, a, a, in Azure, but start to explore the capabilities of Fabric and uh, a smooth uh, interaction with the Fabric experience. And also one of the benefits of having interaction, smooth interaction with all the workloads that exist today in Fabric. Okay, inline a uh, Python uh, was added. Uh, uh, we have a full support in Python. You can uh, add your own code in Python. You can add function that is written in Python. You just need to enable, uh, enable the capability in your service, in the database editor, and it will be available for you. To get, today, uh, OpenAI, it's cool name. You can do it uh, with the vector search capability that exists today in a, a KQL database as part of real-time analytics. Sample databases that I just demonstrated. And um, Autoscale is one of the most, of, uh, is one 
important feature is behind the scenes. Most of the customer won't uh, um, know about this feature, but this is the feature that will provide the best experience with the performance, but also with the most optimized cost. You don't want to overpay and you don't want to get frustrated the performance. And for that, we are continuously improving our algorithm. So we just have Ignite. Did you join Ignite? Have you visited one of our sessions there? Mm -mm. Let's see if there are any comments. Okay. Okay. So uh, I assume you do. Uh, or some of you. So we had a couple of sessions in Ignite and we also shared some of the features that we shared just now, but what we are planning for the future. What we're planning for the future is, uh, first of all, we are working together with Data Activator, Event Stream, and of course, a KQL Query Set and KQL uh, Database to provide more holistic experience with flowed uh, um, um, user experience that will connect everything together under the same um, language we have just we are going to release delta support and it's super important because once we have one one logical copy of all the data that is ingested in custo available in one link in delta the data is available for all the other workloads in less than five minutes it's also available for any KQL capabilities, query set capabilities in less than 10 seconds. But if you want to uh, uh, also explore it with the data warehouse, for example, it will be available as well. And I just want to remind you that today, already today, you can explore, you can use uh, all the data that exists in KQL database with notebook, with Power BI, <coughs> with KQL query set. So, yes. Um, a new item is going to be added. First of all, the real-time dashboard. The real-time dashboard is a, a, a is addition a way to view graphical presentation of queries. Uh, it's more. Uh, it's was built and designed to support operational dashboards on top of big data and also on dynamic data that refresh frequently. Frequently, we are also planning to release soon. Event House, which is a, a combination of multiple KQL databases that share the same experiences, the same governance, permissioning, and also capacity. Uh, it's good for big customers and big projects that would actually big project, not, not necessarily big customers that would like to share uh, capacity and resources between different databases and also share permissioning and governance between different databases. Uh, all the get data experiences was refreshed in order to uh, increase visibility and also uh, usability. And we already see a, a very dr a dramatic increase in the end-to-end -end completion rate. Copilot with natural language to KQL. How many of you was waiting for it? None of you? Okay. I assume uh, many of uh, uh, Log analytics, a KQL queries, a KQL a database user, real-time analytics, Azure Data Explorer, waiting for the ability to ask questions in natural language, and uh, we are. Uh, it's now in private preview, and soon we believe that it uh, will be available for small cycle of people. And of course, monitoring, throttling, enterprise readiness. We are focusing on security aspect. We would like to provide the best platform, portfolio, and workloads within the Fabric solution. OK, before I'm moving on, uh, it's a good time. Uh, any questions, any topic that you would like to clarify here? My dear colleague? Yeah, we had um, a second question. Um, 
one boss the data lineage. I think you already went through that one. And then we have how is the right to be forgotten supported? I'm not sure that I understand this question. I, I, how is the right to be forgotten supported? I would Can assume it has to do with EU regulations. That's what I assume. That, that, that I don't know if the person could give more details on the chat. Um, and probably deleting data, <laughs> making sure it's gone. I guess that's the, the where this person is going to, but I, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure I interpret the question okay. either. I would be, I, I will appreciate if you can please clarify the questions. Uh, I yeah. would be more than happy to uh, to answer. I will, I, uh, but this is a very good opportunity to mention that many of the security capabilities like private network, like one security and things like that are, uh, we are working on that and like, and together with all fabric, we are going to release it in cycles. So we are aware uh, that there are still some stuff that we um, need to add in order to be fully aligned with the enterprise requirements, but we are working hard on that. And definitely, uh, if someone needs something or have a question, you can uh, write me on LinkedIn or uh, email, and I definitely uh, happy to assist. Okay, now let's move to a very fun way. KQL, custom query language, uh, KQL, KQL query, custom query language. Definitely, it's also support SQL. So if you prefer, you can use it. Um, there are also pre-generated queries in SQL. But if you prefer, but uh, since most of you most likely familiar with custo with SQL, we will focus in KQL. So, uh, okay. So, yeah, so if I may interrupt yeah. you. Uh, we have a clarification sure. on chat. So the idea is from a GDPR point of view or a CCPA, a user can request their data deleted from the system. How can their data be deleted in according to regulation? Okay. It's a bit Take complicated, but let's assume I like all my data deleted from the system. I post a request to you. How will you go about it? That's the, the question. Okay. So definitely. There is a work to support this capability in a fabric level. Currently, there, this capability is supported a uh, workload by workload. In KQL database, for example, you can easily, there are a couple of commands that you can use in order to support those uh, uh, capabilities, including purge and stuff like that. Uh, you have it in our documentation. Yes, we are working to make it easier. Uh, but since uh, we believe that not that many uh, people use it on the first day, so we just enable it in the uh, platform capability, in the uh, workload capability, and later we will uh, simplify the access to it. OK, so uh, to query KQL database, you can use KQL or SQL. I'm not sure who uh, KQL engine Custo uh, is also support a most of many of Microsoft products like the Azure Data Explorer, Azure uh, Monitor, uh, Azure Sentinel, uh, Defender, and many more. And also Fabric itself, all the monitoring solution is built on top of a KQL database. Uh, so KQL is very uh, there are many people in the world that uh, use KQL, but still much more that use K SQL. Therefore, we support both. OK, uh, let's go to the detail. Whenever we want to start to create a table, you can use a command of create a table. But definitely, you also have the ability, and uh, we will see it in the demo, just to get to create a new element table easily uh, with a wizard with his user uh, with a wizard you can select a source to define the table schema or you can just drop and drop drag and drop uh, uh, columns and create your own tables this is the, the command statement of created table uh, 
all KQL commands start with dot, dot create table, the name, and then uh, the different columns with the struct uh, with their format. In Custo, in KQL, in KQL uh, language, you also have format of a, a, of dynamic. Whenever you use dynamic, we mean it means that you are going to provide data that is semi-structure, arrays, arrays of arrays, JSON, HTML, XML. And as part of the indexing of these columns, of the semi-structure columns, you will always have, you will also have the capability to query attributes inside the JSON. And you can act, uh, uh, you can select any attribute inside the, uh, the JSON and act as, uh, as it, as it's a column, you know, and it's also a very powerful capability. The second thing is ingest. Definitely, everything is covered with user experience. You can ingest data with event stream. You can ingest data with the get data component, with pipeline, with data flow. But you can also create your own command with dot ingest into a table and the source. There are, um, whenever you want to retrieve data, in SQL, you usually do select star form cells, if in case the cells is the name of the tables. In uh, KQL, you just put the name of the table, uh, control, uh, control enter, no, run, and then get the results. And here, for example, is the result. Uh, next to do, um, you can also have the vis visualization capabilities. Once you retrieve the data, you can also have render, and then the data will uh, display in a, one of the chart that you will define. Take is um, actually is the most useful uh, operator in KQL. Take means that you would like to get some uh, sporadic results, five at this, at this statement, <coughs> five different records from the table cells. And just to be, get familiar with the structure of the data and what type of data you have. You, of course, have the capability of where. Where is a retrieve uh, um, goes on top of the, the different records. And once all the records that re answer yes on the specific questions will be retrieved. One important point that I would like to mention regarding KQL, KQL, uh, any line get a, a data set and retrieve data set. The structure and the format of the, of, uh, of the, uh, the data set that in, uh, enter the line not necessarily will be identical to the ones that will be um, the, the results of the 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 query the statement sorry the query statement so for example here after sample after cells we just retrieve the, the entire data set with all the columns with all the the details and here we will after the where we just get a subset of the data that include the word contains contains it means that we are looking any uh, uh, records in the in the column item that contains the statement mountain 100. You have has and you have contains. Contains means that you just want to have these specific words, whatever it is. Has means that you would like to have this specific uh, phrase with spaces before and after. The performance of has is a little bit better than contains, but both of them works uh, very similar. And here you see the results. We just uh, retrieve the ones that contains the words. Uh, and of course, with where we have so many capabilities, we can have uh, the, all the data, the the order date is from now, from yesterday to now. Uh, 
D means a day, day, of course, you can put any number here. You can add seconds, you can add minutes, you can add, uh, you can play with that and just retrieve the results. Here, uh, sort is order the, the list, the result set per the, uh, the request here. So we get he, cells bring the entire table where retrieve only I, this where it, uh, will retrieve only items that contains uh, this phrase. And then we take this data set and reordering it per order date. And you can see here how we did it. Uh, summarize. Summarize is a very powerful, again, it's an important uh, operator that group and summarize uh, and some grouping uh, per different uh, uh, items. And also here in this example, we grouping uh, the items by item, and we also create a new column of the sum of the summary of the quantity. So it means that we take all the items divided to different type of items, and we add a new column that's called item sold, and we summarize how many items were sold per item type. And you can see here the results. It's a totally different data set than the than sample than the, the cells table because we made some transform some changes during the query. And at this point, we can easily add render as a pie chart or bar chart, and then we can see that in a graphical way. I think. Do you want to do the demo before the exercise or after? What do you prefer? Uh, before, I would say, because then people okay. can, can, yeah, let's go. So, but I think that it's super important to say that this exercise also come with, uh, I think, with some uh, um, uh, prices. So it's worth to stay till the end of the session. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This, we, we, are, we, are, we are not <laughs> finishing here. So let's yeah. um, let's get going with the exercise. Um, here, as, as what's the idea behind Learn Live is that we are um, we are showing you the, the tools as, as any user will will use them. So I will go through the um, so through the exercise like I'm I'm another beginner like you. Um, and considering we went um, GA at uh, at build uh, at ignite sorry last week, we there were some changes that I got surprised today on the interface. So there are a lot of new things that uh, we already will be seeing on the on the exercise. So let's get going. Of course, you need a um, a fabric account to to get started. You can activate, there are many ways that you can activate the Fabric uh, trial. Um, I assume that you have been doing that already for the previous Learn modules in this uh, Learn Live series. So I will just go directly to, to the um, exercise itself. And as always, what we try to do is to have um, a way to clean up resources because um, while you can be in a trial capacity, uh, it's always good to, to basically save money, right? So that's why we are going to create a, a workspace. So let me go to the Fabric uh, interface. You probably know already, but this is how Fabric looks like. You have all the experiences here. This is real-time analytics, the one that Svia has been talking about. Uh, there's Data Factory, Power BI, and so on. But our goal as per the exercise is to create um, a workspace, right? So we can come um, uh, here in Fabric. Let me come here. Then on workspaces, you can say uh, new workspace. And I will call it um, DP. Fabric. 
and then we can just uh, select apply. So the workspace is uh, it's empty, but um, here's where we will create our KQL database, uh, upload data to analyze and so on. So this is what we have. And then we have a KQL, uh, sorry, a, a CSV file that we will import. If you click this link, I already have it open, but it's basically this CSV file that you can get uh, directly from, from GitHub, right? So download that file, uh, have it somewhere where, where you know uh, when you can access it uh, quickly. In my case here, I have it in a, in a folder, right? So let's go back to, to Fabric. Let's see the exercise. So the next step is to create a, a KQL database, right? So in this case, we can go like new, um, Sorry, in real-time analytics experience, we can select here KQL database. And we can give it a name like, um, I don't know, Learn Live. So then here, this is our newly created database. We can do get data. And this is what uh, also Sia was showing. That was um, the UI, UX got streamlined. So you can see that already we can select data source like local file, Azure, Azure storage, even from Amazon S3, uh, event stream. There are many uh, ways to get data into, into Fabric which I want to highlight that this is, this is one of the main ideas uh, since day one, that uh, Fabric isn't, isn't like an isolated Microsoft thing that you may be worried about. No, forget about those thoughts. Actually, as you can see, we can get data literally from, from everywhere. And that's, that's the, the whole idea, to be integrated with what you have today in your data pipeline. And we will make it easier with Fabric. So let's see local file. And here we need to name um, the table, which it's a bit outdated from in, in the in this tutorial. Uh, we will make sure to make it uh, up to date. But just create a new a new table in your in your database. Call it uh, sales. And then immediately you can drag and drop your files here. So I will drag sales into the uh, wizard and let's wait for this to be uploaded so let's select next and for me honestly this was like a, let's say shocking moment <laughs> Because I'm old school, right? I'm command line. I'm like all, all the time typing commands on a black uh, screen, white font. And when I saw that I just drag and dropped um, some CSV file, could be JSON, doesn't matter, into Fabric, and it parsed it like that into a table format, for me, literally, I was like, what, what is going on in the world of data? Like, honestly, this for me was pretty, pretty uh, mind blowing. Uh, but anyway, you know, data? sorry, Sia. Yeah. One small comment. Uh, yeah. This uh, this feature is one of the first feature that I, I, I was adding when I just add joined the team many, many, uh, many years ago. But uh, I'm so happy to hear you talk about it with so much passion. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, and we have a question uh, from uh, chat that says, can it handle large files? What, what, what are our limits here for, for data? So, yeah. uh, what is our limit for data? Yeah, the question is, can it handle large files? From Carlos. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a great question. So actually, we don't have any limitation of data a uh, file size. Directly with the flow that you are just presenting, we can use uh, up to a couple of gigabytes of data. And if you have 
a, a bigger size of data, our recommendation is to use the uh, data flow, the pipelines that uh, uh, also handle the data and run it uh, uh, in parallel to upload and to dice it. So any type, um, any type of file and size can be handled within Fabric, whether it's with this flow or with the pipeline flow. Cool. Yeah, and let me just show because we had a, an interesting question in chat. Is KQL or comments related to Kafka? No, it's not. It's custo query language. I have a, yep. I have a suggestion. Let's please post questions. Let's continue with the demo, and then yep. our next yep. thing is Q, Q, uh, Q and A. So, yeah, let's please let, continue, let and I will uh, answer all the questions for Armas. Yeah, let me leave this open here so we don't forget. So the demo, we updated the data, right? We we have the, the CSV imported and then I can do advanced and uh, you see on the triple dot here, advanced first row is column header. Usually CSV data, we have a first row that describes each column. We will uh, tell this to, to KQL. Uh, to Custo, sorry, and then we just select uh, finish. So you can see this is creating tables, creating the mapping, and is uh, doing the ingestion of, of, of the data. So our data is there. Let's close here. And uh, we can already start uh, querying the data in, in in our database so let me let me see here the the examples so let's copy this one you can go to select your table query table for instance you have sample queries like show any hundred records and you can see that we always have like this button like the this is our is the query um Thea was from team take. <laughs> we like take, right? So uh, any query that in the editor you select and you click run, this will be run by, by the query editor. So let me delete everything from the sample queries and let's run the one from the exercise. So from the table sales, I will we will show the, uh, the item that matches road uh, to 50 black uh, 48, right? So there we hit run. Keep in mind, this is all live data and we see already uh, the results. So back to, to the samples, there is another query here where we can do like, um, um, we can do daytime type of query. So let's copy this one and put it here, run it. So now the, um, the date, we, are, we have things ordered by date and they have to be after the year 2020. That is what's happening in that, in the, in that query. And now let's create a query set because what's the point of having data if we cannot uh, act on it, analyze it, um, create uh, reports and so on. So here we are we have a, a date time range, right? From which will be basically the year 2020 from 1st of January till 31st of December. We want to summarize uh, total revenue. This is a new field that we are creating, like imagine a, a view where we are sum, doing a sum of the unit price by item. And then we are so, sorting by item in ascending order. So we can we already run the query. Here are the results, and I will save this as a query set. We will call it uh, revenue by product. Create. And as we mentioned earlier, KKR query set is a, a place is a workbench that you can handle all the queries. Uh, uh, store it in a different tab, a tab, arrange it, or share it with people. Um, it's a very good uh, working environment for uh, asking questions, get results, and a collaboration, of course. 
Yeah, that, that is something that is really worth uh, ironing out uh, is that uh, Fabric is very a uh, very collaborative platform, both from how you work with your colleagues and um, now that we will have Copilot, also you can collaborate with, with, with an AI that can help you think about queries because you, sometimes you have the data set and you, you can ask what type of queries I can build, what type of reports I can build. So it's, it's, it's collaboration on both sides, which I think augments the experience for, for everybody. So we have the query set, right? So now everybody wants to see a nice report. That is, that is the, that's why, why we are here for, right? So if I click on build Power BI report, we can see that this is integrated directly um, with Fabric. So I will select um, the cluster bar chart. If I'm, let me drag it here or, yeah, here it is. I need to make it a bit bigger. And then you can see on the right side that it has a custom query result, right? So we have the two columns we created earlier in the, in the query set, and I just select them both, and there is uh, our report. I mean, I, I want to use the word magic, but I don't know if this is uh, appropriate. So let's say file, with, because again, collaboration, if we cannot share the report, then what's the point, right? So let's say, uh, Revenue, I will call it like this, and continue. So I did a tiny mistake there. I saved the report on my uh, workspace. I could have selected the workspace that we created for the demo, but I mean, um, that's just, um, just a detail. So let's close here. Then if I go to workspaces, my workspace here, um, let me, Re uh, refresh. Here is a report. And uh, of course, we can share it with colleagues, teams, etc. So that's the demo. What you should do then is go to my workspace and go to settings and delete your workspace. But that's that's up to you to clean up the, the resources. Questions, comments? Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Let me just say how can you create a provision, a new KQL database, uh, bring data, uh, run queries, create a Power BI, and uh, in a couple of minutes. And of course, uh, this is a basic, and you can enrich it with more and more capabilities per your need, more items, more uh, queries. Uh, but um, it's a very good uh, starting point. OK. Um, Let's move to question and then to the exercise. I see that there are a couple. So first of all, is there any connection between KQL and Kafka? So first of all, uh, to uh, those pro for the imagination, both of them have K, so it's uh, there is some connection. But uh, KQL is coming from Cousteau query language, and uh, uh, Kafka is definitely supported as a source uh, uh, for a um, to send data to a KQL database. You can send the data directly from Kafka to a KQL database, or you can use event stream to pipe the data in between and also make transformation in the data as needed. Next question, how it works in terms of creating time bucket for dates, if it's a real time date or is it based on transactions? So. I'm not sure what is the question, so I will try to, from my understanding, once the data is ingested to the system, we're adding a hidden um, column, which is the ingested da uh, date time. And we are indexed, and the default partition is per the, uh, the ingested date. And the ingested date, uh, since the, uh, the, the pipeline is usually in streaming from the creation time in case it works with event stream for example 
to the ingestion time, usually it's very close. There is a couple of seconds difference, but uh, uh, it's very close to the um, ingested time from the time that the, the event was created at the source. And you can run all the uh, partition is built on that and all the queries by default. Once you slice it and you ask for a specific question, we are using this to make better optimization. Uh, next question, can you connect Fabric with Grafana? Definitely, there is a very, uh, uh, there is a guideline uh, that explain uh, how to connect a, a KQL database in Fabric with Grafana in our documentation. Uh, do, since you are presenting the screen, can you please share Grafana Fabric Real-Time Analytics and share the, the link uh, with our audience? Thank you. Next. Ah. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, I can't. Uh, any other questions? Okay. So uh, if you don't have any other questions, let's move to the exercise now. Okay, are you ready? Good. So uh, first question. Uh, first of all, um, now it's your time. Go and build it. Not, 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 not specifically now. Go to the MS Learn. You just saw step-by-step uh, step, what you need to do. So uh, let's uh, uh, try it yourself. If you have any questions, uh, there is a community, Fabric community, uh, with all the questions. You can also address some of the questions uh, in my uh, LinkedIn page. Uh, LinkedIn, Svia, I am there. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, we will be happy to assist. Now, okay. After you saw uh, uh, the detailed explanation from uh, from us in the last, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 72 minutes, let's see what we explained correctly and what we need to improve in our explanation. Mm -hmm. Which KQL command is used to limit the result set size of the query to a specific number of rows? Whether is select, take, or project? Everybody, please share in chat. A, B, or C. Yeah, you can uh, vote in this poll. You just uh, scan it in your um, with your camera, in your mobile, and you can uh, post the results. And uh, can we see the the uh, the results on screen? In screen. We have a B or. We can't. Okay, thank you. So let's see. Uh, let's count down to five, four. Okay, we only have one vote. So people, uh, people, you have the ability to get prices, and we know that there are many people on this call. So start voting. We will wait more. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is okay. Take Team so take. select select is for SQL. Whenever you want to select rows from a table, it's not supported by KQL. It is part of the SQL commands. Take is your way to limit the number of results when you select a specific table. And project is whenever you want to retrieve specific columns as part of your query and not the entire set of columns. Next question, are you ready? Which KQL keywords is used to group and aggregate data? Group by, aggregate, Summarize. So I see some tricky options here, um, but definitely I think that we share this knowledge. So now it's the only question is whether you um, whether whether you remember or whether you will really remember other options. 
So uh, whether it's a group by, aggregate, or summarize, which one, which word <clears throat> will help you to group and aggregate data? We have a Z summarized by Ricardo Thomas. And the right answer and the correct answer is summarize. Okay. Um, what are you are new with Fabric? And what are you are new with real time analytics? Uh, as part of our work for GA, we verify that each and every workload capability and in specific also for real-time analytics we have good documentation tutorials ms learn and all the needs to make, be, to become an expert with the platform and it's not uh, again you you need to start with beginning uh, to introduce with the service ms learned uh, will get, take you through the entire flow, and you can also use the samples gallery in order to understand more scenarios, more data sets, more queries, uh, capabilities, and definitely everything will be is available for you. Uh, Fabric is also available in free trial, so in case you don't have an access, you can just connect with a free trial and try it yourself. Um, so before we are, um, so uh, we still have, uh, now it's your time for Q questions, comments, remarks. Uh, we are here and uh, uh, holding our breath to the battery uh, um, of the camera in the other side of the world. Uh, I and now, just and literally did a battery swap. <laughs> I hope it was smooth. <laughs> <laughs> it was very smooth. And you see, we are mind readers. Yep. <laughs> we already discovered the situation, but uh, great. It was uh, real time, uh, real time. Very, very, very nice. People, do you have, <laughs> you see? as part of the session. Do we have any other, any additional question for the forum or do we want to wrap up for today? Okay. So thank you so much for joining us. I had a great time. Have you? Yeah. Thank you, Thea. And yeah, it was the most interesting thing and <laughs> trying to set up everything both with uh, different situation force majeure but we made it and i'm happy for that yeah yeah and i hope that you enjoy and more than and more than that i hope uh, that you will take the chance and try it yourself because the best way to learn something is by jumping to the pool and actually try it and more than that you have a huge community of support if you have questions if you want to get advices there is the fabric community and we are there to support you with your answers if you have ideas whatever so um here it's the if you want to learn more you have the connection you have the links ms learn fabric real-time analytics thank you for spending the last hour and a half with us and um Let's hope for, for best. And you know what? More than everything, my computer just survived after it crashed. No sirens, no missiles during the last hour and a half. So, and the battery you swapped on time. So it was lucky session. You got everything. <laughs> Enjoy the day, the evening, yeah. the morning, whatever you are in any place in the world. Enjoy and have a great day. Thank you. Ciao.